Jobs numbers came out and they're fantastic, excellent and amazing, and we should take them as a sign that the US economy is still booming and has been for the last 10 years, right? I mean, jobs numbers are showing that the US is impervious to all economic woes currently present across the world. No way the US is going to face recession with the Fed protecting us. But wait a minute, what's this? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. That's why you're here on this channel. You're here for the truth. What's the alternative information? That's what alternative news is supposed to be. Not a bunch of tabloid garbage, not a bunch of conjecture. You want the facts and I'm going to bring them to you today. Here you can see the markets, they are in the green and why. What has been the cause of this? Number one, we had the jobs numbers. I'll destroy that in a second. But first I wanted to talk about what we're seeing with the trade deal. I will cover this in an article at the end of the video but wanted to mention it quickly here. Now we got some trade news that came out, it looked fantastic and I do believe that these two countries should talk amongst themselves and make sure there's progress. I'll talk more about that at the end. But the reason I'm talking about this is that how many times have you seen the stock market rising on trade optimism? There has been no deal. How many thousands of points have been added to the Dow Jones on these headlines alone? How much of this is priced into the market already? It is absurd as far as I'm concerned that we keep hearing the news even when some negative news comes out. It doesn't seem to deter the stock market. So something is very fishy there. But anyway, let's go on with the jobs number. So we get this fantastic jobs number report. It comes out and everybody's so happy. Stock market went up to some degree. But it seems like they forgot to add this to the equation. Job layoffs surged 35% to the highest level to start a year in a decade. We are talking about 200,000 in the first quarter. That's a 36% increase over the previous years, the worst first quarter since 2009. I didn't see anybody talking about this in the media when the jobs numbers came out. But of course, that's at the back. That's being buried under the rug. That's what you'll forget about. And what about this? Household survey data showed that there were, can you believe it, 201,000 fewer people that are counted as employed, but that came with the contraction of the labor force by 224,000. Those counted as not in the labor force increased by 369,000 to 95.6 million. The labor force participation rate declined to 63%. That's down 0.2%. So now we get a much more full picture of what's happening with employment. It's not so bad black and white as they make it seem. There are positives, there are negatives. Look, if oil prices start going up higher, you're going to have new jobs that come on. Even if the economy, maybe it isn't so hot, maybe that we're looking at some tensions happening. If the prices of oil are rising or another industry, then jobs may appear there. But we're looking at this for what it truly is. And right now, it doesn't seem to be good. You are seeing a contraction that is taking place today day in real good jobs. But you don't want to believe me. You don't even want to believe CNBC. I'm consistently criticized. You use the same statistics for those institutions you criticize. Let's look at it from the actual source itself. The BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, showing you right here, looking at the employment status coming down here. The font is really small, but you can see that 200,000 right there, 201,000 under the employed. It's a negative number 201,000. Just giving you the data from the source itself. Remember here at the Money GPS, I'm always going to bring you from the source or as close to it as possible. And that's just what I always aim to do. The mainstream media doesn't ever have to do that, but I will always do that to make sure that you have that data for yourself. One of the most popular sectors in the United States is retail, and we are actually seeing a contraction. This has been taking place actually since 2017 and has been declining ever since on average, but just throughout 2019, we've seen it come down as well. So we'll, we'll see what happens with this. And a lot of this has to do with these stores that are closing down. There's well over 5,600 by my count, and this will probably only get worse. Retail is suffering right now for various reasons, but a lot of these stores are closing and they're obviously laying off a lot of people. After several months in a row of positive manufacturing 
employment the change month over month has declined and this has actually been heading downward for several months along with the contraction in the stock market as we have seen money leaving these different areas of the stock market in general investors are net sellers for several months in a row the same thing seems to be happening with manufacturing employment which is interesting now it was in the positive in previous months but it has been trending downward it is now into the negative in connection with that average weekly earnings for u.s manufacturing employees you can see the trend clearly moving down i don't know why anybody would ever consider the fact that manufacturing jobs are going to be a thing for the united states in the future offshoring of jobs is the number one normal thing for employment if you want to know if there's going to be something that's constant for the next 10 20 30 years it's that offshore of jobs is going to remain and we will have robotics and automation taking over the rest that goes for the retail jobs that goes for the manufacturing jobs any type of job that can be automated that can be put out of business it will this is what's happening today not just in the United States but all around the world I remember I covered here on the channel where one factory they shut down they completely replaced everybody with robots I think 90 plus percent of the people were late off and then what you had was an actual dramatic increase in efficiency and productivity they were able to measure that they only kept around a few employees just to make sure everything's running smoothly maybe some supervisors and this and that and then they'll be gone soon anyway but this is what was just an example that i had shown you previously so expect it wherever it is that manufacturing still exists one of the points that people don't realize is that when you see jobs numbers you need to understand some of them are part-time some of them are full-time and you can see right now in March that this wasn't exactly what they told you and you'll look at this the blue is the change in full-time jobs negative 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 190 and it doesn't say on here but I believe that's in the thousands and you're looking at this 60 and that shows the positive for the part-timers part-time jobs seem to be in abundance and the full-time jobs often are not what people want that's what I've been noticing over the years people will take whatever they can get so they get into a job not what they want but they need employment so they're working that's the way it works however with part-time this has been the case where a lot of employers want to give people part-time versus full-time they don't want to pay them the health care they don't want to have to worry about them for other things benefits and they can just give them part-time people will take it because of the employment situation and that doesn't really come up on the statistics as you would hope this is the breakdown of the jobs numbers looking at March jobs one month net change on the top of the list education and health services rather high up on the list is leisure and hospitality I think that's important construction has actually been growing as you can see on here 16,000 which is a good sign however if you look at it the way it was back in 2007 all of this was the same if you worked for any of the major financial institutions leading up to the financial crisis you would know literally weeks before all the layoffs began it was the biggest rate of expansion these companies had ever done so you would see new areas of the buildings being built up there were people being hired every single day there were meetings about expansion and how do we get into this and that they were buying the budgets were expanding like crazy and then out of nowhere it seemed within just a few weeks everything was put on hold then the layoffs began so in my experience it's not a general slowdown that occurs in this type of expansion particularly with employment it's a u-turn and towards the bottom of the list you could see manufacturing minus 6,000 we need good high paying jobs we don't need more of those that are paying minimum wage it's not enough to keep a middle class a middle class is what's needed a strong middle class is what's needed to keep an economy going this article here is talking about the trade issues and I just wanted to briefly talk about this I think that these two countries will eventually come to terms it won't be what everybody's hoping perhaps but there's gonna be something eventually that they put on paper because it looks good for both countries they just have to make it seem like both sides are winning I think that's really what it's coming down to it's not just about buying products from one side or the other this is also talking about intellectual property and things like this that they've gotten into which they've been disagreeing with there's a lot here that is as 
at stake. And I do believe that it will eventually be resolved to some degree. Like I said, they're going to come up with something and they're just going to put it out there and finalize the deal. These are two countries that are very good partners, although they hate each other in a way. They are very good partners. They buy things from each other. They sell things to each other. And this is a relationship that needs to expand. But you also have these tensions that have been growing. Look at what's happening with the ties in between Russia and China, as well as China with other countries and the US not really favorable to some of these countries. Things are really happening that could snap the back of this in a second. But in terms of trade, in terms of what they're doing with the deal, I think it is beneficial if they do so. And I think it would be beneficial for the stock market as well. The only concern there is that there's already so much priced into this. Thousands of points on the Dow Jones are priced into that alone. So I don't know how much more can go simply because of that. Although removing those tensions is just going to be beneficial for business in general. I think this is taking way too long. Now China has up until 2025 to get going on their side for some of the issues, which I think is completely ludicrous. It's ridiculous. First, it was a 90 day deal. and We're going to get it done. It's going to happen. We're going to sign it now up to 2025. Well, I'm not sure what's going on, but I think we're being swindled in a way. Even Larry Kudlow has something good to say, quote, we are facing a worldwide slowdown as Europe is not doing well. And he's saying, you know, it's over there. It's over there in Europe. It's not here in the US. But at least there's acknowledgement that the global economy is in fact slowing down. We are seeing layoffs that are happening. We are seeing major changes and things are happening very fast at this time. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like on these videos, you are supporting this channel you are supporting the truth. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education you weren't taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. All the details from the foundation, the history, the asset classes, making money so much more. Check them out at the link. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out why the unemployment rate is fake, it's false, it's a lie, click on this video and I will see you there.